Waterloo World is a very interesting area. I'll start with the story for it. Fred Bonaparte, who indeed is a descendant of Napoleon Bonaparte, used to work at Thorny Tower's home for the disturbed. However, and he noticed Crispin, Dr. Lobato's assistant, suffering, so he decided to play a game of Waterloo with him. However, Crispin beat him. A lot. Every single time. Seeing it as a disgrace to the Bonaparte name, Napoleon comes in and plays a game with Waterloo with Fred and won't leave until Fred Ed wins. And Fred never wins. In fact, it won he's confident he'll lose to the point where one small setback and he will forfeit. Determined not to let Fred lose, Raz decides to help him out eh, and actually help him win the game. Inside the board is the board where Napoleon will actually te teach you the basics of the game and it is also where you move your pieces. However, to get your pieces, you have to go down to their houses and, and ask them to join. And they will as long as you do them a favor first. As for Waterloo World itself, it's vast and colorful, and its theme is probably my second favorite in the game, right behind the meat circus. Anyway, after you take out Napoleon's last militiaman, he does the unthinkable. He resorts to cheating. He retracts the bridge to his castle and jams the gears. But, and the emotions with the characters have really changed. Napoleon isn't confident in his victory anymore. He's worried he'll lose. And Fred is actually confident that he'll win instead of constantly thinking he's going to lose. Once you unjam the gears and have the knight take Napoleon's castle, Napoleon then leaves Fred's mind. And after her realizing that he's accomplished his goal and taught Fred to be a winner. While this mind is relatively short, it is definitely enjoyable and, and worthy of being at the number three spot. The Milkman Conspiracy. This is the mind of Boyd Cooper. He's insane as in one of those guys who are like, oh no, they're coming for me. Wait, no, you're from there. Oh no, that's all wrong. Uh, and he's trying to piece together the mystery about the milkman and trying to find where he is. As you can see, he is pretty crazy. Right off the bat, he gives you the power of clairvoyance, which, while it isn't that useful, it is fun to use. Basically, you can use it to see what people th see of you. And it can actually be kind of funny to see what some people see you as. How, how many times did I say see? Uh, I, I don't know. Anyway, right off the bat, when you use clairvoyance on Boyd, you find out that the milkman, the one that everyone's been talking about, is dead. After this twist, you proceed to go outside to look, go to the cemetery to look for the milkman and you're introduced to this neighborhood. I really like how this world looks. In fact, it's probably my favorite design out of all the worlds in the game in terms of art style just and just the way it's designed in general. It is awesome. Anyway, the main thing of this world is that it's inhabited by these zombie detective guys. Basically, they won't, they'll will they arrest you if you go into their perimeter without a specific item to make you think they're one of them. They're just plain hilarious with their, kind of, with their obvious quotes and, and, the fa and the gestures that they have with their items. And just in general, they are very funny. Anyway, once you make it to the graveyard you and make it into the milkman's grave, you will find a book. Once you make it back to Boyd's house after getting arrested by those guys, which is basically just being asked a bunch of random questions, 
Boyd, uh, you find that the book is from the book depository, and Boyd gives you a long and confusing speech about what apparently is happening. Thing. So, in short, you have to go to the book depository. He's not exactly clear on that part until at the end where he says that you should go to the book depository. Anyway, he, he then proceeds to give you a shotgun. Alright, now I can finally get past these guys. No more sneaking for me. Yeah, but... It's a fake gun, and it's just used to get past the other assassins. Yes, assa there are assassins. And then Boyd throws you out of his house to go to the book depository. Once you make it to the book, book depository, you'll find a boatload of assassins outside of there. Seriously, how many are there? Like, 20? Probably not even that amount. How most of the... The areas had like seven of the guys at most, but nope, 20. Anyway, once you get inside of the perimeter of the book depository, apparently one of the rainbow squirts, who's like one of these Girl Scouts, is shooting at, at everyone from the building. Anyway, once you make it to the book depository, the rainbow squirt corners you with a shotgun. A real one. But... Then, after you say something to her, she randomly jumps out, and the guys start questioning her about who the milkman is, because all the detective zombies' goals, all of their goals were to find out who the milkman was. However, instead of just telling them, she blows them up with an exploding box of cookies. Good thing you didn't buy those. Anyway, you take a look with a helicopter and find that the milkman is sleeping away on an, on a remote island in the sea of the neighborhood. At least that's what I'm guessing. Don't really know what else to say. <laughs> and yep, so what you do once you find where it is, you then get a telephone and proceed to skate on tower uh, telephone lines to get to the milkman. As for the fight with the den mother, in the first phase you have to shoot at her, and in the second phase she kills the lights, so you have to uh, uh, use clairvoyance to see things from her perspective and, and shoot at her that way. This fight isn't as frustrating as uh, this fight isn't as frustrating as I thought it was the first time I played it because I thought uh, you had to who use telekinesis to throw the exploding boxes of cookies back at her, which you can do, but I highly don't recommend it. Once you defeat the den mother, the milkman goes crazy and th uses his his the bottles of milk. The exploding dream kind that are fortified with what the world wants, what the world deserves, and blows up everyone to the point where it even knocks you out of his mind. In conclusion, this mind was great. It had my favorite atmosphere out of all of them. The zombie detective guys were hilarious. Boyd was a very, very likable character. And the and kind of in the similar fashion how Lungfishopolis plays out, out like a classic monster movie, the, this mind plays out like a spy flick. And that's really all I have to say. Oh man, this is the best. Black Velvetopia. Where do I begin with this level? I guess the art style. The colors are all changed, and it, it's just really cool looking. I still prefer the for the art style and atmosphere of the Milkman Conspiracy, but this is good too. Basically, the story of the what you have to do is Edgar wants to reach this crying lady at the top, and he tries to build a house of cards to reach her but he just can never do it. The reason is because he's missing his queens, so you set out to go get them um, for him. However, there is one problem. The bull, El Odio. Thanks to him, 
him, he's going to make your adventure a lot tougher. Also, along your adventure, you'll meet up with these dog artists. They're probably as funny as the zombie detectives, but I like these guys more uh, as characters. They serve to sell you paintings as well as tell Edgar's story of what actually happened in his past. Also, along the way, you'll meet up with these wrestlers, who are essentially the people who guard the cards. Their battles are fun, they don't bring a ton to the table, but they are pretty fun, and they can be pretty funny at times at the beginning. The main thing of what you have to do in this area is to uh, go along the streets while hiding in alleys and just doing whatever you can to stay off the main road to avoid El Odio from pushing you back. And eventually you'll meet up with Dingo, the arrogant bull tamer, who who wants you to paint a sign for him so you can uh so that at he'll have advertisement. And as for the weapon, the confusion grenade that you get, while I prefer clairvoyance and shield above this, it still is pretty cool. Basically you just throw it at someone and it'll make them confused. However, that's not. Uh, also, this power actually has build up to it, believe it or not. In the fight with the blueprint tank, it can actually use confusion grenades on you, so you'll have to watch out for that. As for the fight itself, it's pretty good. Basically, you have to hit, hit El Odio with confusion grenades and then use telekinesis to stab him with one of the spears. Once you've, And this battle is actually symbolic of Edgar's story, which I didn't explain earlier because I think this would be a better time to explain it. Basically, Edgar used to be captain of his high school wrestling team. And he, and his girlfriend was one of the cheerleaders. However, her during the, during the um, uh, end of the state semifinals, Edgar saw uh, his his girlfriend making out with the captain of the cheer squad, and he choked and blew the game for her his entire team. This is actually very symbolic for the battle. Lampita, the guy Edgar was trying to save, was his high school sweetheart. Dingo is, is the captain of the cheer squad. And El Odio, which in Spanish literally means the hatred, is, is Edgar, who, who's going out in blind rage against both of them. When El Odio is down to half health, Dingo will step in to finish the job. However, since... Edgar is El Odio, and it's Edgar's mind, you have to protect him. So instead of defeating El Odio, you have to defeat Dingo, and in the same way that you fought El Odio. However, Dingo oh, takes more damage than El Odio, and it'll only take him four hits each. So what? Oh, you have to do, defeat Dingo and make sure to keep El Odio alive. This escort mission kind of thing works worlds better than it did back in the meat circus. And and what happens after the fight is great. After you finally kill Dingo, Lampita loses it and Edgar realizes how pathetic they are. And he is, and he's ashamed that he was hung up so long over those losers. Literally. He, he, that's actually what he says. And in the end, to celebrate his victory, he sends both of them down a giant pit. The end. In conclusion, this mind was just great. It had everything a good level in this game needed, and it didn't had a great humor. Good art style, the best, in my opinion, the best story of any of the minds in the game, and it doesn't have any problems because even the Milkman conspiracy, he had some issues in my opinion. Anyway, I'm Cardboard Box Productions.